What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and today it feels like Christmas morning. It's officially March Madness. We have a bracket, and today I am going to be filling out a March Madness bracket and going over the best strategy to go out there and win your pool, whether it's with your buddies or an office pool, whatever. We all want the money. We all want the bragging rights. We're going to talk through some of the more broad strategies of how does the scoring even work and then go into how we can leverage what the public is doing versus our Ken Palms and our projections of the world. So we have a lot to get into. I will say, I said, welcome back. It might just be welcome to the basement for a lot of you guys. This is a fantasy football channel. One day a year, I stray away from fantasy football to talk about March Madness. I love March Madness. I'm a huge college basketball fan. I've been doing this since I was in middle school and high school, along with fantasy football, where I've always been the guy hounding people down, almost being like a loan shark at the age of like 12, saying, hey, give me $5, we'll do a pool, give me $5, we'll do a fantasy football league. So this is the one video a year where you guys have to indulge me, and I get to talk about college hoops. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe and then come back in the summer for fantasy football content. If not, just watch the video, leave it a like, and that's all you got to do. So without further ado, let's go. Now, when we talk about the bracket pool, I want to zoom out for a second because we want to talk about two things first that you have to consider before we even look at the teams. Scoring in the size of your pool. First up with scoring, I have a picture here. ESPN changed their interface this year, so just bear with me. This is a screenshot from last year, but this is how the scoring works for the ESPN Bracket Tournament Challenge or the Tournament Challenge in general on ESPN. The scoring is like this. You have the same amount of points in every round, 320, 320, 320. The important thing is, is that a lot of people fixate on like the 5 versus 12s and the 4 versus 13s and the trendy first round picks. Those are fun, and it's cool to come out of the first couple days with the lead in your pool, but they don't matter a ton, right? We see there the first round, each game is only worth 10 points. That's not all that much in the grand scheme of things when you can score a total of 1,920, where most of your points are going to be. And what I'm usually doing when I fill out these brackets and you know the first weekend ends, I want to have my Sweet 16 intact, my Elite 8 intact. It's almost like, I compared it last year, it's almost like a game of Battleship, where if if your champion gets sunk in the first round, it's over with. You could have a perfect first round, and if your champion, sh if your champion won, you're done with. So you want to make sure that you're protect like, think of it through the lens of the further you advance a team, the more those are important. So you really want to spend a lot more time on who your final four is and who your elite eight is and who you have in the championship more than like you, like I know a lot of us are going to do it and you're going to stay up and you're going to be like, ah, do I, do I want to do James Madison or Wisconsin? You're going to fight yourself on that the entire time. Yes, those are fun. They're good. But like you can see down there, if you get a team uh, into the final four, that's 160 points. You get the national champion, right? That's 320 points. You get the same amount of points for guessing the national championship correct as if you got the entire first round correct. So again, sweet 16 and later are the most impactful parts where you really want to be keying in on those late matchups. Again, round one, they're fun. The five versus 12 is all of that. But we really want to be locked in on our final fours, our lead eights, our national champion, all of that. Now, the next thing we want to look at is the size of our pool because... We're going to go to Ken Palm here, and we're going to look at the projections of who they have winning. So right now, they have Houston winning. Now, by the way, I'll have all these links down below. This is from Ken Palm's free sub stack, uh, or sub stack where he has all of the teams here listed with their Sweet 16, Elite 8, all of that. So what I really wanted to hammer home is let's say you have a pool of, of 50 people. That's what, that's what our base will be here. 50 seems about right for most settings. I know some of us... I like to do the ones with like thousands of people in it and try and get a bunch of money. But I know the more casual, you know, everyone that's going to be watching this video, 85% of you or so are probably just going to be in like office, home pools, all of that good stuff. And you want to remember, you don't want to pick a champion with a less percent chance of winning it all than you have to win your own pool because you're dead if you don't get that champion correct. So if you have, let's say, so one divided by 50, you have a 2% chance of winning. So that means that you should only be picking Illinois and above, right? So that's that's 2.5%, 2.5%, 2.8% and above 
to win it all. There's no reason to go further down than that, right? With only 50 other people, you don't have to get so weird that you're like, all right, I'm going to have Florida winning it all. Because at that point, you might as well just place a future. Because again, you can really only win your bracket pool if you get the winner correct. You need to be aware of your pool size when you're picking your champion. Now, if it's even smaller, let's say it's like 10 people, right? So you have a 10% chance of winning. You really shouldn't be picking anybody outside of Houston, Connecticut, and Purdue. Because again, you're just shortchanging yourself on your odds to win your entire pool. Now, after that, we need to decide how we're going to leverage the public, right? That is our next thing here. Now, we know how many people are in our pool. We know what the scoring works and how that all sort of ties in with the bracket challenge. We have to leverage the public. Now, this is where things get real tricky because ESPN usually has a whom picked whom, where you can see the entire thing. It's essentially the same exact thing of what we just saw with Ken Palm, but it's going to be who the public has. Because the idea here is if there's a true coin flip matchup in the first round and 80% of the field is on heads, you might as well be on the 20% side because then you can leverage the field. And if tails hits, then you and the 20% now get an advantage over the 80%. So you're at even odds, but you can leverage the field where it's more impactful when the other side wins and you get an advantage over the rest of the field. Now, the issue is we no longer have that. Now, whether or not ESPN releases this eventually, we'll see. Uh, It seems like it's something with, you know, they changed the the whole look of the site for the ESPN bracket challenge or tournament challenge part of their website. We'll see. Uh, But they do have a couple of things. They have the, the people's bracket and they have the champions. So this is how I kind of made up for it. I know team rankings has like a a paid part that takes a kind of like a mix of ESPN where they get uh, data from ESPN and they get it from Yahoo and everything. It's like a paid thing. You can definitely go that route if you'd like to. Um, but what I did is I used the most picked champions on ESPN. And then I used, so they have the people's bracket. The issue is, is like Houston being picked 50, like Houston's not a champion on 58% of brackets, nor is Houston a champion in 32% of brackets. So really all you can take from ESPN as it stands right now, is data from the first round, right? So all of these, because these are never going to change, right? Utah State versus TCU, Purdue versus uh, Montana State, Grambling, whatever. These are never going to change. So I took the first round uh, public odds or public picks. I took the champion public picks. And then we have Yahoo, where I filled in the rest of the gaps. They are round the 32, round the 16. Again, all based on what the public is picking right now, because we want to know what the public is on so then we can leverage it with Ken Palm. And then I usually like to blend two because I don't want to just have all my eggs in one uh, projection basket. So we used Ken Palm, which is just like a power rating system. And then it like simulates the entire tournament. And then boom, we get these projections here. And then I also used Bart Torvik. It's pretty much another Ken Palm where it's the same thing. Uh, There's power rankings for all of these teams. He has the percent chance to advance in each round. And that brings us to this sheet here. Now, do not worry. I will have this sheet ready to go for you guys either uh, I'll have it in the description I'll have it pinned at the top of the comments for sure but now this is what we got here where you can see here we have Ken Palm and B Torvik so that's the Bart Torvik and I blended them together just used an average so that's what the both column is then we have public which again for round of 64 right it's just to to advance out of the round of 64 to advance out of round of 32 to advance out of sweet 16 to advance out of the elite eight to advance out of the final four, and then to win the entire thing. We have both, which is our Ken Palm and Bart Torvik projections. Then we have public, which again, round of 64 and national champion is going to be from ESPN inside here. So round of 32 through final four, that's all from Yahoo. And then we have our leverage, which is just straight up the projection minus the public. And we can now see, you know, Florida, 78% of the public is on Florida, but they're really more of a coin flip to advance. That's a pretty easy, might as well just take the other side of that matchup and just fade the public because if Florida loses, you get about even odds that they advance, but you get a massive, massive leverage over your bracket pool. Now I will say one little asterisk before we start filling out a bracket here, know your pool, right? We have the public uh, percentages here. But the smaller your your pool is, the more likely that these are going to be pretty inaccurate based on your pool, right? So if we have the public numbers here of national champions, right now about a quarter of the field is taking Connecticut. If you have a a pool of like a thousand people, that'll probably prove to be true. If you have a pool of 
50 people, but let's say your office is in Connecticut and there's a bunch of fans, you got to kind of think in your head a little bit more like maybe this, like you, you can definitely, uh, I'll have this sheet down below. I won't be able to give anybody access to it, but you can just copy it. You go to file um, and you can like, I can move the screen over, but I'm not going to, you can just make a copy. You can go file, make a copy and you can even like manually, if you want to mess around and you're like, well, I live in Connecticut or I don't know, maybe you work at UConn or you're, you, you go to UConn and you're watching this video. You can move this UConn number to like 40% if you want. You can kind of, you know, tinker with it that way. So just something to be mindful of is what your pool might be doing. Like I live, um, I was going to say, I live in Jersey. We didn't get any teams in, but if Seton Hall was in, they're a number you could, they're a team you could bump numbers up for. So know what you're playing in. I also have my own bracket pool that we'll talk about at the end of this video uh, that you can join. I'll have just as long as you just DM me on Twitter or Discord, I'll give you the Venmo to pay, and then I'll give you the bracket pool link. But in that one, most people are going to be watching this video, so you almost the, the this almost doesn't work for that pool because then some people might see this right where there's really bad leverage on Connecticut. Well, that might overcorrect itself. And now the people in my pool have seen this video. They know that Connecticut's going to be a popular pick, almost way too popular by only being a 16.1% chance to win based on the models, but a 26.2% on the public. So a pretty rough bet leverage wise. But again, you might find out that in the Ron Stewart basement pool that it kind of fixes itself. Or instead, Connecticut might only be picked like 15% of the time and they could have been a great pick in my pool. So just know the environment that you're playing within. So again, just to recap the leverage, we want the green leverage because right with like Houston, Houston has a 22% chance to win it all. If only 12% of your pool picks them, then you have this inflated chance to win it all. And you're going to be competing with less teams in your pool. So that's also something to remember is the further you go down the national championship, right? Like, so let's say you, let's say you're in like a, a, a 500 person pool. Um, and you pick, let's say you pick, I don't know who are, who are some of the sleeper picks? Let's say you pick Auburn, right? Only 2.8% of people are going to be on Auburn. That's going to be 28 people in your pool of like a thousand. That's not a lot to compete with. So like the, what I'm trying to say is the, the further out you get with your champion, the less crazy you have to get with the rest of your bracket. Because again, you're only competing with the same people that choose the champion that you chose, right? So if you chose, if you choose the betting, you know, the public favor like UConn, be prepared to be competing with a quarter of your bracket pool. And then from there, you're going to want to get pretty unique. And maybe you, you know, maybe you do UConn versus like Auburn in the final here, where there's like a ton of leverage on Auburn and they're not a very popular pick. And you can just then come, you can then pair them with a popular pick like a UConn. So again, all things to consider here of how popular things are, the chalkier your champion is, the weirder you want the rest of your bracket to look to compete and stick out against those other winners. And again, if you pick a per, if you pick a team like Auburn with only 2.8% of the field picking Auburn, then you can get pretty, pretty chalky all the way through your final four. And you almost don't want to overthink yourself and like get too, too weird, uh, especially in those smaller pools, right? Because we don't want to make this like one in a million bracket if you're just competing with like 15 of your buddies. So I think that that covers everything I wanted to talk about with strategy. The last thing we're going to do here is fill out a bracket. I will be straight, straight up honest with you guys. I have not filled out a bracket yet. I actually saved it um, just for this here. Uh, not that I saved it, but I always like to do some research and get some more background info before I just fill one out willy nilly. Cause then I find myself just getting kind of attached to some of the picks that I made on night one without really thinking about everything too much. Now, the last bit of strategy that we'll talk through here is you want to work backwards. Remember what we talked about earlier with all the points being skewed towards the top, you want to pick your champion, then your final four, then your elite eight, and you can kind of fill in things from there in your sweet 16, but you want to be very mindful about what your final four is going to be, what your champion is going to be instead of going, you know, just straight down your bracket. I know it's like the more fun way. And if you're, if you want to do it that way, sure. But when it comes to like the most optimal strategy, you definitely want to be caring about that final four, that elite eight, because again, we want to be looking up after the first weekend and have our entire elite eight intact because then you're in a really, really good spot. So in the spirit of working backwards, let's go to our national champion here, where when we look at who the public is on, let's actually just do uh, our projection here. We have Houston, 22.2% chance to win in the projection, 
only 12.2% in the public, 10% leverage. That is really, really strong. Now, you certainly could go UConn. I especially think in pools like mine that are going to watch this video, I think UConn's going to be more viable. Um, again, in like smaller, in, in larger field ones, if you wanted to go Purdue, it seems like these four are all great in larger field uh, contests like what probably like a, uh probably more than 100 probably like 250 and more Purdue Arizona Iowa State all great options I know North Carolina is very popular too they're a pretty brutal pick as well now people might be saying you know why is UConn that bad of a pick the issue for UConn is they are in a just a bracket of horror this four seed for Auburn is crazy disrespectful BYU is nasty Illinois won their conference tournament Iowa State if not Houston, Iowa State just actually beat Houston um, in the Big 12 tournament and has a defense that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Houston. Uh, Drake's a scary mid-major team. BYU lights it up from three. Uh, San Diego State's one of the scarier uh, Mountain West teams. And then FAU made a Final Four last year, and UConn's going to have to play them early on. Like UConn is going to have to see most likely Auburn in, I believe this would be the Sweet 16 would be Auburn, and then in like the final, and then in the Elite Eight, could see a team like Iowa State. So they have just an absolute brutal, brutal draw. And you can say the same thing about North Carolina, uh, where Baylor is really good. Uh, Nevada is one of the hottest teams in the country right now. Uh, but I also think that their metrics aren't great either. They just lost to NC State in the ACC tournament. So just something to watch for uh, in terms of these leverages. In case you want an explanation for, like, Ron, like, why are these teams so bad and then of course like your your blue bloods are gonna be the same like kentucky kentucky's a super popular pick because they're kentucky everyone loves kentucky the models have them at a 0.9 percent chance to win it all the public at 4.7 percent makes them a pretty brutal pick uh kentucky here so with that being said we're gonna go chalk here pretty easily if you're in a a pool of like less than 250 houston is probably your best bet leverage wise so let's just let's just move houston all the way to the end now, I know that people are going to be like, well, you picked Houston last year. I think we picked Houston last year. Like, why are we going to do this again? And here's why. Houston is now a part of the Big 12. They played a gauntlet of a schedule. They fared really well in the Big 12. They won the regular season title. And it came down to the final game versus a really good two-seed Iowa State. This is probably the best Houston team they've had so far. Or the most battle-tested Houston team because they... Uh, made the jump from, I can't remember what the other, maybe it was like the American or something or the Atlantic 10, but they moved from a conference to the Big 12 and they held their own this year with easily like their most competitive schedule uh, since they've been a really good team these past, you know, four or five years. Now, when we look at the final four and we see what the metrics have here, you have UConn, you have Connecticut. I think the big question mark is going to be figuring out when you want to drop Connecticut because you have minus 10.1% chance as a champion or leverage as a champion, minus 20.8% chance or God damn it, minus 20.8% leverage uh, to make the final, minus 28 point or minus 26.4% to make the final four, minus 24.7% to make the elite eight, minus 10% chance or t minus 10% leverage to make the sweet 16. So they get really interesting where you have to kind of decide where you want to fade them. And I'm a bit undecided right now. I, I wouldn't mind having them losing to Houston in the final, but that's going to be a very chalk uh, final here. So I don't know. You, you could even talk me into them losing versus Auburn. Now, again, because we picked Houston, we're going to have to get a little bit weirder than we would like ideally want to be. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is start caring about who we advance to the final four. So that's going to be this Elite Eight. So remember again, it says Elite Eight, but this is just to advance out of the Elite Eight. So to win their game in the Elite Eight, this is the percent chance. So Purdue, pretty much a fine play. You have Iowa State here. Yeah, like if you wanted to get weird, you could certainly do uh, Iowa State to like, I, I think if, if you want to get a leg up, especially if you pick Houston, if you want to get a leg up over uh the chalk teams that have UConn in the final four or Houston beating UConn, uh, Auburn or Iowa state are going to be who you want to make it to the final. So I think what we're going to do here, man, Auburn is a trendy pick. I think I'll go Iowa state. I'll probably go Iowa state. The thing is 
it's going to come down to where you want UConn to, to lose. You can have UConn lose to, to Auburn. You can have them lose to Iowa State. You can have them lose uh, in the Final Four to somebody else if you'd like to uh, as well. So this is where it certainly is going to get tough. Um, I don't love Auburn. They're not. They don't have a lot of guards that really have moved me. And we gotta be we gotta be pretty certain with where we are pretty mindful of where we bump out Connecticut. Man, I think the bet like the the spot where there's the the worst the the most negative leverage would be for them to lose in the elite eight. And I'm tempted to go that route. The issue is that you have like as much leverage. I think for now, we'll we'll keep it at this for now because I'm not quite sure. I I think at the very least we'll have them. We'll have Auburn's a fun one too, though, man. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that as is. I'll leave that as is. Let's think about the other side of the, the final fours here. Let's see. So the pretty brutal ones to make the final four is North Carolina, it's it's uh, Kentucky. The issue is that if you don't have, where's the best spot to have? You guys see what I'm doing here? Where I'm sort of checking to see what the worst leverage is for North Carolina, because based on where the worst leverage is, is probably where you want them to lose, if that makes sense. Wow. So you get the most leverage on them by having them lose in the Sweet 16. Who would they play in the Sweet 16? So around the 32 here. And then they would play one of like, man, I don't believe in Bama at all. I don't believe in St. Like, I don't really love St. Mary's. I know that they beat Gonzaga in that final. I do like New Mexico to make a little bit of a run in this in this bracket. I don't trust Arizona that much either. I think Arizona lost to Oregon in this Pac-12 uh, championship. but they Or not championship, but Pac-12 tournament. They do have Caleb Love. There is definitely a storyline of, of Arizona potentially playing North Carolina later on. Yeah, this is just not a this is not a good uh wow. I hate that there's actually good value on Alabama this year, too. There's actually good value on Alabama. So that is interesting. So Bama, you get the you get the most leverage on Bama by having them advance to the Elite Eight. And then you can kind of figure out what you want to do with them from there. So if they were to make the Elite Eight, that means that they would have to beat UNC. I just don't think that they would. I, I just don't think that they will. I don't I don't really believe in this Alabama team. I think that they would lose to UNC in this game. I still do like UNC, even though uh, the numbers here tell us that they're a pretty, pretty brutal pick the entire way. I can't have them lose in the Sweet 16. It's just too, it's too much. I think I could have them lose in the Elite Eight, uh, two in Arizona. You could talk me into Baylor. Uh, let's let's go back to deciding. Let's actually just see our elite eight teams now, or just kind of the the best odds to make the elite eight. We have Houston. We can kind of talk through Purdue here for a second. Again, I'm just kind of looking through to just see like what the uh, where the leverage is on a team like Purdue. And the issue is that you get the most leverage on Purdue by advancing them to the championship, which means you would have to have them winning uh, over Houston. So then, where does it become the most advantageous? to have them bumped out. Yeah, the funny part is with Purdue is the public is so sick of them, uh, especially after last year, uh, that like they're now a fine value uh, across the board. So I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll have them advance pretty far. This bracket that they're in is pretty good. Tennessee is fun. Uh, I am curious where they have Tennessee in terms of uh, making the final four. Yeah, so they're not like uh, an amazing value, Tennessee. As much as I do love Tennessee, man, Tennessee or Purdue, huh? That's kind of where it's gonna what it's gonna come down to. And Tennessee seems to be not too overrated either. There, yeah. So Tennessee, Purdue, I'm pretty comfortable with that being uh, our what's this? Our elite eight matchup. I'm very comfortable with that. Very comfortable. Let's see. Let's see. Let's let's keep kind of messing around here. I, I do want to kind of decide our Elite Eight and then move from there. So we have Houston. We have Purdue in our Elite Eight. I'm fine with that. UConn's in our Elite Eight. I'm not having them I'm not having them lose to FAU or Northwestern. I just can't do it. Then we have Arizona. Well, so Arizona, by the numbers, Arizona 
they believe that Arizona should be favored versus North Carolina. Really, to make the Elite Eight, Arizona has a better chance than North Carolina. So I think that Arizona has to be in our Elite Eight. I know that it's like a lot of two seeds and stuff, but we'll kind of see what happens here. Now, in terms of chance to make it further than that, if Auburn, Connecticut, just to make the Elite Eight, dang, so that would have to be that would have to be Auburn over UConn to make the Elite Eight. I, and I can't do Bama, man. I, I I just can't. I know that they I know that they're actually a good leverage pick. Can't do it. Um, all right, so. That's our lead eight in two of the regions. I actually, man, do we want to send home UConn early? I think that's the play. If we're going to go Houston, who is our second chalkiest pick, uh, there's going to be a lot of teams picking Houston. They're probably going to be the second most behind North Carolina um, and UConn here. Man. All right. So let's, let's keep picking our, let's keep picking our lead eight. I know I, this is a lot of rambling. I gotta be honest. We're gonna have we're gonna have timestamps in this video. Um, if you didn't come to hear my college basketball analysis or anything, this is really just the part where I, I laid out the strategy. You can do it for yourself. Um, so our elite eight teams, pretty much like your your fun elite eight teams are gonna be pretty advantageous to pick. Are w like wildly Auburn and Alabama, and then you can put St. Mary's in there. Man, I do, I do love BYU. BYU is very, very fun. Huh, so BYU in the Sweet 16 is actually uh, one of the better picks you can make. Yeah, we're going to make BYU a Sweet 16 team. I do love BYU. Uh, who would they play in the Sweet 16? Oh, so it had to be BYU over Illinois, huh? I'm actually fine with that. I'm actually fine with that. Where does it, when does it become most advantageous to fade Illinois? I know that I know we're bouncing all around here. But you just you just gotta bear with me, people. Just bear with me. Where do I have Illinois? So Illinois was actually maybe the most advantageous to bounce in this uh, in the second round. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually a perfect spot to bounce Illinois. I like I like what we have here. Things are starting to come together. All right. Now, let's keep building out that elite eight because I think that that's our most important thing right now because then then from there you can start to tell uh yourself stories on these teams so our elite eight now we have to make a decision on the on the auburn connecticut thing that's really the issue right now so we have yukon yukon becomes the most advantageous to have them lose in really any of you want to have them lose in any of the sweet 16 elite eight or the final four i can't do sweet 16 versus fau or northwestern it comes down <clears throat> it comes down to whether or not Auburn beats UConn. And I, I can't do it. So we're going to have UConn versus Iowa State. This is this is so much more chalky than I would like it to be. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is a lot more chalky than I would like it to be. Huh. So when we think about our Elite Eight picks here, we have Houston, we have Purdue, we have Auburn over UConn, we have Arizona, Iowa State, Tex Tennessee. So who, okay, again. Again, I hate all of the teams uh, that are actually good picks to make the Elite Eight. So we can actually see the the, uh, the leverage here. Auburn seems to be the best one, followed by St. Mary's, followed by Alabama. Huh. Huh. Followed by Boise State, Colorado, Texas Tech, New Mexico, Michigan State. All right, so I'm trying to gauge how weird we should get because we're getting we're we're getting to a spot where we're getting almost grossly chalk. I am curious what do, what do we think in terms of the in terms of this Houston region here. So this would be uh, Marquette, which is actually not a terrible pick. We don't know what's going on with Kolek. Um, it's not Creighton in this one. So there's Marquette. The three seed is Kentucky, which is a brutal pick. Let's actually see where, where we want to bounce Kentucky because we're for sure bouncing Kentucky early. Man. Kentucky might get bodied by this NC State team. 
So they're they're pretty brutal leverage wise every step of the way. We probably want to fade them. Like Sweet 16 is probably the furthest I want Kentucky to be for us. So we'll have Kentucky here. Man, we might ha let's actually let's bounce around to this NC State team. NC State terrible leverage in the first round. It's actually a pretty solid pick to have t NC State losing to Texas Tech. But do they become like do they ever give you leverage at any point? No. Man, and this Texas Tech team is good, but I don't really know. I don't know that Texas Tech I would ever have beating. Man, there's a lot of leverage having them beating Kentucky, though. And then if they didn't, it would have to be Houston, which, or no, it would have to be whoever makes out of it between Florida, Marquette. What What's the most advantageous round to get Florida out of here? Boise State, Colorado. Let's yeah, let's get Florida out in the first round. I know that Florida is a super hot pick. They got really hot in the SEC tournament. They uh, made it to the end versus Auburn. So let's do that. Um, we're actually going to do all. We're going to do Auburn over UConn. I think because the rest of this bracket, I can already see I'm staring down the barrel of us doing a really chalk bracket. So let's do like one region of chaos, and that'll kind of be this region. Uh, we will advance Iowa State though, man. Iowa State's really like I have a really hard time. Uh, betting against Iowa State. I'm trying to think of like how weird we should truly be getting here. If we're like assuming this is a 50 person bracket, I think you could get away with this. Um, I do want to make sure one more time that Iowa State is a strong team to make the final four. Like when does it become? Yeah, so Iowa State. Yeah, Iowa State's a team that you definitely want to advance to the final four. And maybe even make it to the championship game. Okay, so I'm fine with that. I'm fine with where we have Iowa State. I'm fine with how we have this bracket playing out. Because now we have uh, Auburn making the Elite Eight. Which seems to be one of the better plays you can make. God damn it, man. Are we going to believe in Alabama? The thing is... The thing is, I just hate this Nate Oates style. It's fun. They can blow teams out by 25. They can put up. They can win like 105 to 70 against any team. But the minute, I just have flashbacks. We're getting deep in the weeds on college basketball. I have flashbacks. I had Alabama winning the uh, SEC regular season tournament. They had the inside track with three games to go. They played Tennessee. They go one for 14 from three uh, in like the final uh, like four minutes and just completely crushed everything. That's the issue. They live and die by the three. And the minute the three runs cold, Things get ugly. They do have uh, a really good guard in Sears, though. Um, the issue is, is like, man, I don't know that I can put them. I, I don't know that I can do them over North Carolina. I know North Carolina is a pretty brutal pick, is what we're seeing here, where they are uh, the second biggest favorite, and they just have terrible leverage across the board. You want them to lose in the Elite Eight? I guess the most leverage is them losing in the Sweet 16 versus Bama. Man, how crazy! I'm trying to. I'm just trying to think of how crazy too crazy is, because now I don't mind that. But let's actually before let, before we get too crazy, let's actually think through um, our final four. Because right now we have a two seed, we have a one seed. It's not all that crazy. Our final four. We don't want to get too in over our skis. I think from this Midwest region, it's going to be. Man, so you can talk yourself into Creighton, you can talk yourself into Tennessee, you can talk yourself into Purdue, and they're all priced pretty fairly. Um, you're actually getting some value, or no, you're not. Um, you are getting value on Duke, but not in this region. And the other one is, who's the four seed in this one? Kansas, yeah, no, can't, miss me with Kansas, miss me with Gonzaga. In the sixth seed, I'm not advancing south, yeah, no. So it's, it's Purdue, Tennessee, or Creighton from this one. Creighton's actually a really fun team. Uh, but I'm going to probably pass on that. Creighton, you're getting leverage. So Creighton, you're getting the most leverage, uh, getting them into the Elite Eight. So I think that's what I'll... No, I can't get them into the Elite Eight. I essentially just have to get Creighton into the Sweet 16, and then they're going to lose there. That's just what it has to be. Um, so we'll have Creighton lose his game to Tennessee. I love Dalton Connect. I love Ziegler. They're a really scary team. Um, so there's that. Uh, we have this part of our Elite Eight filled in. Let's do the rest of our Elite Eight now that I'm thinking about it. So Elite Eight, we have Auburn. We have, uh, do we have Bama? We don't have Bama. Maybe we should put Bama in our Elite Eight. 
as like the other big one. Like, what's the chance? So North Carolina is only thirty six point seven. So let's do it. I, I'm not even a fan. We'll do Bama, just just to get a little bit weird here. The SEC was a really good conference this year. I could see it. Bama's going to be a tough team to prepare for in the tournament. I'm just all it takes is one game for them to be stone cold. They, they could lose versus Charleston because they shot twenty five percent from three. So Auburn, Bama, St. Mary's. If if you're uncomfortable with Bama, you can also do St. Mary's over North Carolina. Um, I'm not going to. Uh, I do love BYU to make the Elite Eight, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's see. Let's see. All right, so now we need to d decide the rest of our Elite Eight, with the rest being that Marquette side. Marquette's actually like a fine pick. We'll have them over Kentucky. Uh, Marquette. So, yeah, we'll have Marquette going to the final uh, or the Elite Eight. So now we have 1-2. We have 2-4. We have one. We have two, four, two, one. I don't like that we have all two seeds in here. Uh, let's actually let's see real quick. If we like, I know we don't necessarily have to make it so we don't have a single uh, two seed. Like I, I just don't like the idea of having all two seeds in our in our elite eight. So let's see for a second. So in terms of making the elite eight, the worst leverage here is going to be Tennessee, Arizona. So Tennessee, Arizona with Creighton. So I think that's the play. If we're, if we're going to take out one of Tennessee or Arizona, I think we should. It's a decent idea. It would have to be Creighton or it would have to be like, I mean, Baylor's not a great pick. It would have to be, what, like New Mexico? Would New Mexico be the pick? I'm trying to think here for a second. Who would even be the pick to make it out to the Elite Eight? Because it would just be be Arizona. The issue is Arizona got a really easy region. I don't love Baylor. We'll have to do we'll have to do Arizona. I can't knock Tennessee though. I re I I like both of those teams, so that's the issue for me. No, we'll have all two seats. We'll have all two seats. Fine. I think we already got weird enough with uh with uh the Auburn and Bama advancing. All right. So now let's talk through our final four. Because that's kind of the next thing we have to really care about. First, we have Houston. Of course, we have Houston. Purdue and Tennessee are both interesting. They're both interesting. Purdue, again, you're not really getting a ton of value on anything. You could talk me into having Purdue leave early, but we don't have to get that weird. Um, and I don't think that Purdue's going to get the whistles uh, that they're going to get, that they've been getting in the Big Ten. I just don't think they're going to be tested. Like, I think Utah State's a fun Mountain West team, but I think that they're going to have trouble against Purdue. Uh, this Gonzaga team, I'm not all that concerned about. This Kansas team, I'm not all that concerned about. They, they're they like hurt. They're banged up. They've just been awful. They lost in the first round of Cincinnati in the Big 12 tournament, who's not even really a tournament team. Um, or they're definitely not a tournament team. Cincinnati is not in the tournament. Um, all right. So that's where we'll have Purdue losing. I just really like Dawn Connect and Tennessee. And then we're going to be doing to make the final four out of the other region here between Arizona. Are we just going to have a ton of two seeds here? I really do like them, though. All right, so if we have Houston, we have Tennessee, we have Iowa State, and then we can go with Arizona. Or we can go Alabama, but they're all the way down here with only 5.8. So let's go Arizona. I, I know it's, it's like, okay, you have a lot of two seeds, but I think we had enough chaos to kind of measure it out. We have 4-2, two, 1-2. Two. Um, we have a six seed in our Sweet 16. We have 4-2, two, 1-2. Two. Yeah, and again, because we're really only looking through it, the lens of a 50-person pool, um, I think that this plays. Now, in terms of who is going to be playing versus Houston in the final... We have, all right, again, advancing from Final Four to the championship. We have Houston, uh, Purdue, Iowa State. So they have or they have Arizona and Iowa State like roughly equal here in terms of like 14.6% versus 13.6%. Wow. And they have Auburn not that far behind them either. When's, when's the most advantageous spot to, to have them? The most advantageous spot is to have them definitely get to the Elite Eight. And then from there, you can certainly decide what you want to do. Wow. So it is very interesting that Auburn is like the same. Wow. So you're getting a lot of leverage on Auburn to make the final. 
Should we do it? I, like, again, Iowa State and Arizona are both really good picks, too. So it kind of just comes down to what you think um, is going to happen in real life. I don't really believe in Arizona. Man, we, uh, a rematch of the Big 12 championship would be really, really interesting. But it gets tough. It gets real tough here. Arizona, Iowa State. Arizona has Caleb Love. He's been on a team that's made it to the championship. I will say, I know Auburn doesn't have great guards. I don't know much about Iowa State's guards, though. I just, I just, I just know that they are a really good defensively sound team here. Fifth best uh, team in Ken Palm. Who are their players? Keyshawn Gilbert. Yeah, I don't know any of these guys. He's like a junior guard, sophomore guard. Role players are like some freshmen, and some seniors. Their most frequent. They're starting five, junior, sophomore, freshman, senior, senior. Huh. Huh. And then we know with Arizona, Caleb Love, of course, senior guard. Oh, I do love Balo, the uh, the senior big. He's fun as well. There is some concerns with their coach, Tommy Lloyd. The furthest he's gone is the Sweet 16. So him making the championship for the first time would be pretty crazy. Um, and then the other one we're looking at is Auburn, which I do love, uh, wow. Ken Palm has Auburn as their fourth rated team, despite them getting a four seed here. Auburn, Johnny Broom. I love Johnny Broom, but that's really all they have. They have some like senior forwards. They have one senior guard in Katie Johnson. That looks good. Trey Donaldson, Denver Jones. I'm going to go Arizona. I do. I do just like Arizona. I think Iowa state's certainly interesting. Um, but yeah, let's go Arizona. I like that. Houston over Arizona. They are here. They have a decent amount of leverage. Again, you could have talked me into Auburn. You could talk me into Iowa State. You could talk me into Arizona. I think all three of these uh, are really strong options uh, if you want to get kind of off the beaten, beaten path of your uh, Connecticut's and your uh, North Carolina. So that's what we'll do. Houston versus Arizona. Uh, Houston beats Arizona. Actually, I want to check Iowa State one more time. My bad. So their coach is this Altenberger guy. He's also never made it past the Sweet 16. I think this is going to be the year of like a lot of people exercising their demons. You have uh, Tennessee with, I believe, what, Rick Barnes. I don't think he's ever made it past the Sweet 16. We'll have him there. Uh, Purdue, similar idea. All right. That's our final four. That's our championship. Even as much as it is tempting, even as tempting as it is, to go actually we're gonna do Iowa State <sighs> actually no we'll go Caleb Love okay and it's gonna be the final's gonna be in Arizona so that's actually really fun all right so now we have our final four we have our elite eights intact all right so now we can kind of just uh have some fun here let's just sort of look through uh the sweet 16 and then we can kind of figure everything out from there so we have Houston in our sweet 16 Connecticut Arizona Iowa State let's just see the best leverage in sweet 16 uh, we have Auburn in our Sweet 16. So St. Mary's in the Sweet 16. So I guess that would be beating Alabama. We're not going to have that happen. Uh, when's kind of the best point to jump off the St. Mary's train? It's probably, yeah, it's probably them beating Grand Canyon and then losing to Alabama, which I'm fine with. Um, let's see again. Leverage for making the Sweet 16. Or no, maybe I, I had that wrong earlier when I was looking at that. But leverage to make the Sweet 16 here. Man, should we have should we have Kentucky losing to Texas Tech? Should we do it? I do love the idea. I can't do Boise State over Marquette. Um, even though we certainly could if we wanted to. But Boise State over Marquette or Boise State, Colorado, there's always gonna be teams like these first four teams are always slept on because it's like one or the other, like you don't know who it's going to be. Uh they're a great choice over Florida. Let's see for a second here. So in terms of our sweet, our, our best Sweet 16 leverage plays, we have Auburn. We already put in. We have Miss Me with Gonzaga. We have BYU, who we already put in. See, this is where you can get a little bit weird with it. Man, I do really like this New Mexico team. We're, we're going to for sure have New Mexico go. Uh, they just won the Mountain West tournament. They have Patino's younger, uh, Patino's son. Um, and Patino's son, I think he has... Jamal Mashburn uh, Jr., who his dad was like uh, Patino's best player over at, uh, in the Kentucky days. So that's just a really fun team. Yeah, and then your leverage kind of conks out after that. So I'm fine with that. We'll have, I think we'll have New Mexico in the Sweet 16. 
where does that leave Baylor in terms of leverage? Baylor has pretty awful leverage. Uh, yeah, so we'll have we'll have Baylor losing this. I don't think there's any reason to have Colgate winning this game. Yeah, no, you're not getting a ton of leverage there. I guess what's what's like the the, the funniest thing is is we're going to be doing a lot of this where the first round will just take the leverage plays. Just remember, again, I have my own bracket pool. It might be something you want to fade um, because this might this might be super popular in like sharper pools where everyone's just going to pick these. So we go we went Boise State over uh, Boise State Colorado, uh, Virginia Colorado State uh, over Texas definitely isn't a bad idea. I am curious to know when it becomes most advantageous to get Texas out of here. And it seems like that's going to be the first round. Yeah, so let's get Texas out of here. Now I will say this might this might correct itself once we get uh you know whoever wins this first four matchup, then people might start being like, oh, well, Colorado State, I like them more than Virginia and kind of shakes out. But for now, this is the way that we'll go. Um, Texas Tech, man, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should go Texas Tech over Kentucky. Kentucky doesn't guard anybody. I think that we might be falling in love with six seeds though. Although, no, we don't have Clemson. I don't like South Carolina. Let's do it then. We know Texas Tech is super advantageous to advance out of that round of 32. After that, who really cares? We'll have them losing to Marquette. Let's see. Let's see. Some other some other fun Sweet 16 spots here. What bracket is Michigan State in? Who would they have to beat to get into the... Are they not an 8-9 seed? Oh, wow. So that would be them beating UNC early, huh? I could easily see Michigan State beating UNC, um, but we're not going to do that. So we'll do Michigan State over Mississippi State. We'll do Michigan State over Mississippi State, and then even if they beat North Carolina, we're kind of we're kind of playing with house money here because we don't have to have North Carolina not advancing because we already have them losing to Bama. So if Michigan State wins this game, we're in a better spot, and then Bama takes care of business for Michigan State, and we still get a pretty good sizable advantage over the field here. So New Mexico, we did Mississippi State is actually a good Sweet 16. Um, all right, I don't think there's any other Sweet 16 teams that I really feel all that crazy about. Uh, and then we will just do around the 64 best leverage plays. You have Texas Tech. Who's Nebraska playing? Nebraska. Isn't that an 8-9? Yeah, give me Nebraska over. If, if the, the field loves Texas A&M, I'll take Nebraska. New Mexico we already did. Now, I know that Northwestern is technically the better play over FAU. But I do kind of think that FAU has been waiting to turn it on in this tournament. And I know Northwestern, they have Boo Booey. I think outside of Boo Booey, they are hurting a little bit on that team. Where's Florida Atlantic? When does it become advantageous? All right, so give me FAU. Uh, let's, let's start just going down the bracket now. Okay, so San Diego State versus UAB. Let's see. Should I actually just... Let's actually just do it by seeding here. So San Diego State is a five seed. When does it become the most advantageous to have them losing? And that would be the Sweet 16 matchup versus Auburn. So that's fine by me. I don't need to really bet on that UAB. I don't really love that UAB team. Like, I feel like the year for them to actually do something was last year. Um, so we have that. Washington State versus Drake. I like Drake. I think that everyone's on Drake, though. Yeah, there's not even leverage on. Like, it, it, the, the public pick is Drake. So you know what? I might just go Washington State. I don't even like Washington State. God damn it. I don't even like Washington State. We'll go Washington State, whatever. Um, the other side of things, we have Wisconsin, uh, five seed, where it becomes the most advantageous to, it doesn't really matter. We'll have Wisconsin over James Madison. Uh, Duke versus Vermont. Duke minus 5.1%. Duke, Duke's actually like not a terrible value this year. Um, I will go Duke over Vermont. And then it's Duke versus Wisconsin here. And I think I would take Duke. I think I would. This Wisconsin seems not all that great. Yeah, we'll go Duke. I do like Duke. We'll have Duke lose to Houston. Houston be able to guard well. Duke still has a really good team. They might just, they might be getting slept on. They did get a tough uh, draw to be in the same thing or the same uh, quadrant as Houston. And then we'll scroll down. Uh, we need Dayton versus Nevada. So Dayton... Not really a ton of leverage anywhere for Dayton. Uh, Nevada, sort of a similar thing. I do like this Nevada team. They've been red hot recently. Uh, yeah, we'll go Nevada. Then we have Utah State. 
I think Utah State won the regular season title for Mountain West. I'm just I'm just flexing my knowledge on you guys. <laughs> Not that it really matters. Um, but I know I know a thing or two about college ball. TCU good of us anything here? How many how many Mountain West teams do I got advancing? Because as a as a guy as a Seton Hall fan who got absolutely snubbed by the Mountain West, just cucking us all over the place. I think I need to fade the Mountain West a little bit. Um, so let's do that. Let's do that. Why not? Screw screw the Mountain West. We'll go TCU in this matchup. Uh, then we have Gonzaga versus McNeese, which I think McNeese State's going to be a popular pick. Actually, no. You're not getting leverage anywhere for McNeese. Um, and then Gonzaga's getting... What's Gonzaga rated? Gonzaga getting a five seat does still feel great. They were at a spot where they were on the bubble in like November. Uh, so Gonzaga in the Sweet 16, you're actually getting leverage on. 4.3%, nothing crazy, but uh, I am fine with that. I kind of want to see where Kansas is at. I'm tempted to take Samford over them. I know it's a popular pick, but I still think it would be fun. Especially with the idea that we don't really need Kansas to go anywhere. And Gonzaga actually has a better chance to make the Sweet 16 than Kansas, uh, according to our numbers here. So we'll definitely go Gonzaga in the Sweet 16. Should we pick a 13 over 4 just for the fun of it? I don't, yeah, I don't think we've done a 13 over 4 once. Let's do one 13 over 4. Kansas is just, <sighs> Kansas is just down bad right now. I don't, I don't know what to do with them. Because I, I do know they're, can they're still Kansas. You still have Bill Self at the head of things. A first round exit would be pretty crazy. I do, uh, I do want to know, has Kansas had a first round exit at any point? In the Bill Self era. Am I an idiot for not knowing this? Round two. I'm not seeing... Oh, okay, so I don't think that they've lost in round one since 06. All right, yeah, I'm not going to do it. I don't have the balls for it. So we'll go Kansas. We'll have them losing to Gonzaga. Actually, I'm still going to go Kansas. Uh, It's still Kansas. It's still Bill Self. I, I know that... They're not good leverage-wise really anywhere at this point, but they're also not terrible leverage-wise because nobody's on. Like usually, people ev usually everyone's all over Kansas. Nobody is this year, so I'm sort of fine uh, doing that. And then we have one last matchup here. I think this is run. This is run way longer than I've wanted it to. But people that hang around the channel know that that's kind of just how these things go. Uh, Oregon's been red hot. I don't really believe in this South Carolina team. I know that they were good. I know that they have some good wins. Man, so I have one eleven winning. I have those two sixes. Oregon's hot, man. I'm going to take Oregon here. All right, so there's our winner. Uh, how many total points will be scored in this game? Let me just see real quick, like some of these past Houston scores. What was the, what was the, wow, 69-41 versus Iowa State. So what's that, like 110? We'll do, we'll call it, I don't know, man. We'll call it 119. It'll be a low-scoring game. Actually, we'll do 123. <laughs> we'll enter, no, we're not. We're not entering these because then they take down your information or whatever. Okay, so that's the bracket we're going to submit here for the video. You can sort of, I don't know, if you want to slow-mo it and sort of find the screen grab where we go over the entire thing, you can. Um, or actually, I'll just, I'll probably put a link down below of the entire thing. Now, the last thing I want to mention here before I get out is um, I do have a bracket pool. If any of you guys want to join and you're looking for a pool, uh, all you have to do is look, I haven't even filled out my actual bracket, but this is going to be in this pool. Right now we have 34 members. Uh, it's $10 to join, $10 to third place, $50 to second place, and first place takes the rest. You get one entry max all, already at 34. So that's a pool of 340. Uh, third gets 10, second gets 50, so that's 60 minus 340. So then first place gets $280 right now. We had 50 total teams last year, or brackets last year. I think that we might flirt with like 75 to 100 this year. So get in. I'll have a link down below. Just all you got to do, DM me on Twitter. I'll send you my Venmo. You pay the $10. I send you the ESPN bracket link, and boom, you're ready to go. So all that will be down below. I'll have the uh, spreadsheet I was using. Um, I will have, uh, how to contact me on the bracket pool. Uh, and that'll all be down there. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is one of, uh, it's honestly more of like a passion project video than anything else. I don't care if two people watch this video. I don't care if a million people watch this video. Uh, I do just love a, any excuse to talk college basketball. So 
I appreciate you watching. Again, if you are new to the channel, just leave a like. You can hit the subscribe button. If you are a fantasy football person, you can stay around and watch fantasy football content. If not, have a happy March. This is the my favorite time of the year. Watch the games, bet on the games, meet with your friends, all of that. It's a great time to not only watch good basketball, but to spend time with the people you cherish the most. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed that. And I will see y'all in the next one.